Yeah, if I reflect back and I have to consider what the impact of the awards might be, I think in the short term it's clear that it has um, stimulated incredible interest and a buzz across the continent and in the built environment community, which is fantastic. In the medium to long term, I'm fairly confident that it will raise the quality of work that is done on the continent. But most importantly, I think it will raise the quality of what is designed. Uh, and for me, the, the sort of big impression I was left with is that we've got incredible talent and potential, but that requires nurturing and support. And so I really see this award as absolutely vital to stimulate both the discourse, but also the practice of architecture in Africa. As a jury member, it's wonderful to have had the opportunity to look at this at over 300 entries. And if I have to reflect on the, my general impressions on, on this body of work, on the built category, I think it was interesting and difficult that we lumped together both private and public work and small scale and large scale. So that uh, complicated assessment in some ways. And I think in future years, it would be interesting to see if we can nuance some of those categories. What was wonderful was to have the speculative category and I think the critical discourse and to insist from the beginning that it's not just about the design and not just about the built work, but it's also about the imagination and about how we build an African specific discourse on what it is that we mean with a context specific or uh, let's say uh, a, a form of expression and a form of intervention that is resonant with the issues confronting the African continent. And if I look across the four categories, I think that we can say we've made a fantastic beginning, particularly in the speculative and in the critical discourse, there were some wonderful insights. But it's also interesting that there was a strong dissonance between the kind of complexity and the interest in more sort of abstract philosophical questions and often quite literal expressions in the built categories. And it would be interesting to see if there will be more cross-pollination between these poles in future iterations of the award. So, of course, as uh, the only non-architect on the jury, um, if I have to think about what stood out for me from the process and what was a personal highlight, uh, at, at one level it was very personal, very subjective. I felt incredibly privileged to be, in, to be immersed in this world of practitioners and accomplished architects who both clearly have a passion for the field but also have uh, highly critical and incisive minds. And so the jury process in itself was for me absolutely a highlight to have an opportunity to learn from, to exchange, to debate, to argue with my colleagues on the jury. And that was profoundly enriching, but also stimulating and provocative. The other highlight for me was definitely the speculative category and the works that came in there. Um, I think it was I found it profound that we have students on the continent who's able to bring together not just a fine reading of context, but really imaginative responses to some of the most insoluble crises that we face in, in the continent. And to be able to express that aesthetically, but also to think about what it might mean as a provocation for the built environment disciplines, I found really, really impressive. And that will stay with me. And in fact, I was desperately trying to get some of those works uh, almost as artistic reminders of, uh, of what this process was all about. So those for me are the two highlights of the process.